Dear friends, our topic today is the position of women in ancient India. The position of women was varied throughout the ancient period. The study of the position of women in ancient India is very much related with their education. In the ancient period, young girls were given lessons in dancing and singing. But women in the ancient period as well as in the present also could not lead a free life. However, these did not affect her status in the family events. Manu said that goats live happily where women are revered. Women are given equal status with men and this is evident from the fact that she was considered to be the half that completed the husband. A wife had the complete control over the servant, unmarried brothers and sisters of the husband. It also find that women publicly attend dances and the other festivals. Religious rites and the rituals could not be performed without the wife. We find a story in the Rig Veda that a man who left his wife because of her impertinence and went for practicing penance, but God explained to him that he could not perform the penance without his wife. Now, let us come to the achievement of women. Women, besides her position in the family, actively participated in the various social and the religious activities. Religiously, they could not officiate as priests. We came to know from the Rig Veda that some of the women were Brahmavadinis, who remained to be student lifelong. Many of the women at that period of time were considered as prophets. Many of them were linked with hymns. Ghosa, Appalla, Vishwabara are prominent names. Women of the middle and the upper classes could read and write. Women contributed in the literary domain also. The wife of Dehaneshwara named Mamaka, professing Mahayana Buddhism, written in the Swadharma Chakra Parabhadra, Mahavira of Sarnath. Ketala Devi, queen of the Chalukya Vikramaditya IV, was called Abhinava Saraswati for her literary achievements. It is said that the poetess Vijayanka of Karnata was considered only second to Kalidasa. The wife of the well-known poet Rajasekhara named Avanti Sundari was a literary critic and a, a reputed poetess. Balapandita, daughter of the well-known poet Dhanapala, also a great poetess. About this time, some well-known poetesses, Sita, Bhava Devi, Raj Keswaraswati, Swaraswati, Bikatani, Tambha, Palgu Hastini, Marula, Morika, and the Bijaka composed their poems. A medical book on the disease of women was also written by one lady, Rusha. The book was translated into Arabic in 8th century. There is also some story that Ubhaya Bharati, wife of Mandana Misra, served as a jury when there was a religious debate between her husband 
and the Sankaracharya. In the Brihadaranka Upanishad, we find the story of Vijayan Kalvya and the Maitreyi. They were allowed to participate in the intellectual activities of the society. In the same Upanishad, we also find the name of Gargi asking difficult questions. In Sandyogya Upanishad, women were treated with great regard. Like men, women were initiated Vedic studies. They were allowed to recite Vedic mantras. Now, let us come to the marriageable age of the girls in the ancient period. In the Dharma Shastra, the marriageable age of a girl is given from the age 8 to 12. Al Biruni remarks that Brahmanas in India married girls 12 years old. But evidences of the marriage of the girls at advanced age is also found. In the royal families, girls were sometimes given chances to select their husbands. Women in good families sometimes observe the parda system and the women did not appear in the public veils. However, this was not a great general custom. Sometimes, Wives subscribe to creeds different from those of their husband. The Gaha Devala Govinda Chandra of Kanaus had a number of queens of whom two were Buddhist. The wife of Ganga Marasimha, who was Saiva himself, adopted ascetism and the meditating on Jaina, attain salvation by fasting. Many women entered Buddhism as nuns. Now, let us come to the characteristics of an uh, ideal woman. Puranas give us a picture of ideal woman. Woman as a wife is master of domestic life and a, a source of happiness. She took care of the family deity, the elders of the family. She absolutely devoted to her husband. The reverence of husband to a woman is more than that of the Shiva and the Vishnu. She served the Lord by serving her husband. The wife should not utter her husband's name because it is believed that by uttering her husband's name shorten his longevity. In the absence of the husband, wife should avoid decorating herself, taking only simple food and the drink. She also must avoid dancing singing and the public festival. It is believed that a house is purified by the presence of a pratibrata. Women should participate in the religious activity of their husband. But for performing religious fast or go on pilgrimage, she must take consent of her husband. Now, let us come to the protection of the woman. Brihaspati says that women must be watched all the time by the other woman member of the family. A dictum of Manu said, a woman is protected by her father during childhood, by her husband during youth and by her sons during old age. 
there is also another dictum of Manu which says an Acharya or a Vedic teacher excels ten Upadhyayas or salaried sub teachers in glory. A father excels a hundred Acharyas, but a mother excels a one thousand fathers. It only shows that men were considered useless unless their wives also participated in all his spiritual striving. Thus, the famous grammarian Panini explained the meaning of the word patni or wife as one who participated religious ceremonies of her husband. If a man violates an unwilling woman, his property should be confiscated. In relation to adultery, some smritis and the Puranas condemn women for their moral lapses. But different pictures were given to the moral life of women. Naraha Mihira says that women in general are pure and blameless. They deserve the highest honor and respect. Thus, the old Indian tradition does not give any distinction between men and women. Seldom, woman is even considered to be superior to men. The scripture does not discriminate between men and women. Genius in her in the soul. It makes no distinction between men and women. That is why woman is taken as mothers, creator and the sustainer of life. And therefore, they have some specific duties to perform, a specific path to follow and some specific strife after. Apart from these specific aims, rights and the duties of women is same as those of Indian men. Because of their right and duties and also their specific ideals, the status of women becomes very high. These have been manifested in the lives of women, domestic, social or spiritual. In India, woman has been recognized into two main ideals, that is Brahmavadinis and the dead of the Sadhyavadhu. A Brahmavadini is striving for the highest philosophical knowledge, knowledge of truth, knowledge of Brahman. Hence, the ideal life of Brahmavadini is spiritual well-being. On the other hand, a Sadhyavadhu dedicating herself to the welfare of her family. There is no antagonistic between the position of a Brahmavadini and the death of a Sadhyavadhu. Both are great in their own places, but it also may be considered that it was by no means obligatory for a Brahmavadini to take the vow of celibacy, renounce the world and carry on meditation. Many Sadhyavadu were also of a high spiritual nature. In the midst of their multifarious domestic duties, they strove for spiritual perfection. The important thing to be count is her inner inclination and the ideals. The Ramayana and the Mahabharata, the two great epic of India, we find many instances of Brahmavadini and the Sadhyavadu. The wife of Sez Atri in the Ramayana is vivid example of Brahmavadini. Anusya, the wife of the Sez Atri, practices several penances 
spent almost whole of her life in deep meditation and they reach the height of spiritual perfection. A low caste woman called Sramani Savari in the same epic that is Ramayana was also a celebrated ascetic woman. She was honored by many great ascetics. The domestic perfection in the Ramayana is found in the great personality of Sita. The incomparable ideal of Sita as wife, as mother, as one of purity of heart shows the strength of character, courage and the confidence of a Sadhyavadu. In the Mahabharata, a good example of Brahmavadini is Sulabha of Rajasi Pradhan clan. She was a great scholar and become ascetic for life. Numerous names as an example of domestic perfection is found in Mahabharata. Gandhari, Kunti, Draupati, Savitri and Satyabhama were the perfect example of Sadhyavadhu. Besides epic, Puranas also gives us celebrated women in both Brahmavadini and the Sadhyavadhu ideals. The consort of King Riyadhaja, Madalasa was a great scholar, saintly woman and a devoted wife and mother. Another saintly woman of the Puranas is Devahuti, wife of the great says Kardama and the mother of the great says Kapila, the propounder of the Sankhya system of Indian philosophy. She lived a household life but proved her unique spiritual attainments. Queen Sugandha and the Didda ruled Kashmir for some times in 10th century AD. In the 13th century, Kakatiya Rudramba occupies the throne of Warangal. She administered her kingdom efficiently and effectively. In the 13th century itself, Queen Balamaha Devi ruled Aluppa country from the Barahakanya. Queen of Sahamana Somyovara of Azmir, Karpura Devi acted as a regent for her son Prithviraj III. Akka Devi, sister of Chalukya Jayasimha II of the Dekan, acted as a governor of Kishukar. Queens Sirya Devi and the Mahala Devi administered in war in the last quarter of the 11th century. A lady named Somanathaya acted as a minister of Sirya Devi and another lady named Balaya occupies the post of a judge under Mahala Devi. Akka Devi is described as a great warrior. In 1197 AD, a lady named Uma Devi imitated Belagavati in the Simoga district, Mysore. The above given is a brief and a rapid survey of the Indian womanhood in the ancient period. During the modern age, 
the women of India are standing in the crossroad. At this critical juncture in the lives of Indian women, both the ancient ideals of Brahmavadini and the Sadhyavadu seem to be out of date. A modern girl seems neither care for religious and the spiritual perfection nor looking after the domestic life. But in spite of these facts, we feel that the immortal ideals of Indian womanhood are still there and inspiring the hearts of modern women. Thank you for your patient hearing. Thank you.